In this video, I'll offer you two things. First, I'll explain what we mean by the word system when we say systems thinking or a systems approach. And second, I'll share with you an important idea from systems thinking, one that you can apply and test right away in your own work. This is the idea that good people can make harmful decisions if the systems within which they're making those decisions are poorly designed. And therefore, that one of the best ways to try to improve the world is to improve the systems that we all live and work within. So let's start with the definition of a system. System may be a word that you've heard quite a lot lately, maybe used in different ways. In the climate leader, we define the word system very specifically. A system is a set of elements whose interconnections determine their behavior. This collection of circles is not a system. It has elements, but they aren't particularly interconnected. This flower, on the other hand, is definitely a system. It's composed of parts or elements, and the way the elements interact determines the behavior of the whole system. The roots supply the leaves with water and nutrients, the arrangement of the petals in the flower attracts pollinators, and so on. Of course, the flower is also an element in a bigger system that contains soil and other plants, sun and wind and rain. A forest is a system, and so is a sports team. A neighborhood, a company, your liver, those are all systems. A parliament or a political movement, those are systems too. Any set of elements whose interconnections determine their behavior is a system. Now, what do I mean by the interconnections determining the behavior? That should become more clear if we talk about a concrete, specific example. Imagine there's a CEO of an energy company who needs to decide whether or not that company should construct a new coal-fired power plant. Let's think about some of the elements that might influence that decision maker. That person's individual concern about climate change might influence the decision, and different individuals playing the role of CEO might have different levels of concern. But no matter what the individual's beliefs, there are a set of pressures that would apply to most people holding that role. There's how strongly shareholders desire the company to be profitable, and there's the expected profitability of a new coal-fired power plant compared to other types of electricity generation. That profitability in turn depends on a whole set of factors, including whether there's a price for carbon pollution and how high that price is, what the costs of other sources of energy are, and the cost to meet other standards, like air quality standards. You might think of other influences as well. A CEO who is personally concerned about climate change might very well be reluctant to invest in a coal-fired power plant. But if all of the incentives of the system remain the same, if the shareholders are demanding a high return on investment, if carbon pollution is free, if renewable energy is much more expensive than fossil energy, then do you think a CEO who wanted to maintain his or her position would be able to decide against a coal-fired power plant if it was the most profitable alternative? Maybe. Maybe a remarkable individual could do just that. But then what would happen? How long would that individual keep shareholder confidence? How long until a new leader would be recruited, one who would be more focused on profits and less focused on climate? This line of thinking leads to an important question that you should apply to your own work. Would a new decision maker placed in the same system make a different decision? If you find yourself facing a system that's not functioning in the way you'd like to see, whether that system is the UN climate negotiations or your team of six at your workplace, we'd encourage you to take your frustration and your desire for change and apply it not to blaming the decision maker stuck within a poorly functioning system, but instead to asking yourself how that system could be changed. If we take our example of the energy company CEO, replacing one CEO with another individual might not lead to radical change. But what if we could change the taxes, the regulations, the incentives, the policies influencing those decision makers? Then we might see real differences. And in fact, around the world, people are organizing themselves to change the mixture of incentives and pressures that influence decisions about where our energy comes from. In the U.S., the Obama administration is putting tougher controls on the performance standard for coal-fired power plants. Around the world, climate advocates are pressuring governments to adopt carbon prices. Others are working to reduce the costs of renewable energy via research and development or via government subsidies for clean energy. And new business models are being developed that allow business decision-making to take into account goals other than profit. Each of these strategies, if successful, has a chance to change the balance of pressures and incentives in ways that could lead to different outcomes. 
Systems rarely change by themselves. They change because people like you and me work together, strategize, collaborate, push, pull, coax, and sometimes force systems into new behaviors. Choosing to focus more on the system and less on the players does not mean sitting passively back and waiting for systems to change themselves. Sometimes it means being brave, say when advocating for an unpopular policy. Sometimes it means being persuasive, say when coaxing someone to try a new technology or the subway instead of a car. Sometimes it means leading by example. Sometimes it means being willing to commit civil disobedience. Sometimes it means showing up with a spreadsheet full of cost-benefit calculations. Changing systems is unlikely to be easy. If it was easy to change a system for the better, it probably would have already been changed. But if you persevere, if you continue to ask yourself, how do the pressures and incentives in this system give rise to its behavior, then I think that you'll find new strategies, new possibilities, and new avenues for change.